Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to Bethany United Methodist Church, where we are leading others to experience God's love, know Jesus Christ, and grow in His image. I am Pastor Wynn, and I am blessed to lead you in the service of today, where we will have opportunities to sit together in silence, uh, consider God's Word, and reflect in meditation on how it is speaking into our lives today and share a joyful noise as we lift up our voices with music in the style of the Tze that the musicians will lead us in. I pray that wherever you are, that you can settle in and just be present in this place. And we're going to go to God in just a moment to ask for that very thing. Before we do that, I want to encourage you to uh, check out our website and a few different links. You can check in and register your presence with us in worship. You can also turn in your prayer request. We want to know how we can be lifting you up in prayer. And as the Spirit leads you, you can go to our giving link uh, to share your tithes and your offerings there. Uh, I encourage you after your time of worship, wherever you are, whatever time it is, that you do take a little bit of time to explore our website and just see the different classes that are starting up and activities and events uh, that you can be engaging in as you share the life of Christ with others as well. As we start our service now, let us begin with a word of prayer. Holy and loving God, we are so grateful for your gracious presence in our lives. We pray, Lord, that we have a wonderful sense now where we are of you right next to us, of your spirit indwelling within our spirits. As we call upon you, God, to be present with us, we pray that you will help us to open our eyes to see you in our vision around us, to hear your word as it is spoken through scripture across the generations. Open our hearts, God, that we may be open and receptive to your love for us and pouring that love out for others. And we thank you, God, that just right where we are, you are meeting us and you are speaking to us to guide us along the path that we seek, that path that leads to Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.
Listen now for the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah and take in what it is God is pouring out into you. Allow this to become a part of who you are. Isaiah reads, You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I declared and saved and proclaimed when there was no strange God among you. And you are my witnesses, says the Lord. I am God, and also henceforth I am he. There is no one who can deliver from my hand. I work, and who can hinder it? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Hear again this word from God and allow yourself to be captured by it whether that's a sentence, a word, or a phrase, or an image that God puts in your mind. Receive God's message for you through the prophecy. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me, I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I declared and saved and proclaimed when there was no strange God among you. And you are my witnesses, says the Lord. I am God, and also henceforth I am He. There is no one who can deliver from my hand. I work, and who can hinder it? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. As you hear this read, once again, whatever it is you have heard, Whatever message you felt has resonated with God meeting you right where you are, offer that back to God. Acknowledge you have received this message and give God the glory and the thanksgiving. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I declared and saved and proclaimed when there was no strange God among you. And you are my witnesses, says the Lord. I am God, and also henceforth I am He. There is no one who can deliver from my hand. I work, and who can hinder it? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel.
I invite you now, my sisters and my brothers, to settle your body again. Allow yourself to be still. Put your body in a position where it's not distracting you so that you can be present with God in your mind, in your heart, and in your spirit. As we come to God now in this time of prayer, I invite you to close your eyes. You can bow your head or fold your hands. Whatever it is you need to do to allow your attention to be on God. Lift up to God where you are out loud or in writing, um, your, your thanksgiving, your celebrations, or cry out to God in your time of need. Pour out your cares and concerns because the God who hears is the God who answers. And remember, you can also share those prayer requests with us through our website. But whatever it is you need to do, be in this time with God, be in conversation with God, and especially let us begin this prayer by listening to God. Holy One, you who are ever present with us, we give you thanks that you pursue us even when we are moving away and pursuing other things. God, you give us a clarity in our minds when the world offers so much confusion. You restore our faith when we doubt, and you offer us forgiveness when we stray. God, be with us. And continue to pursue us in all the ways that we separate ourselves from you when we lose our way and make other things our gods in the way that we uh, lift them up, in the way we worship. Let us see, Lord, that there is only one light in our life, the light that is Jesus Christ, that light that reveals you more fully for us than anything else we could ever hope to encounter God, in all the distractions and the temptations of the world, we do seek your forgiveness for the ways that we have failed to be your obedient people. We seek God to be restored once again to your good and right path for us. I pray, Lord, for each of my sisters and brothers who are in this worship now, that in our thoughts, in our words, in our lives, we may more fully today and tomorrow be an offering of the Christ than we had been yesterday. Give us a wisdom, God, beyond our own experience and understanding that we may know in our minds what is your will for us. In all the ways we struggle, God, we thank you for setting us right again in your way. And God, as we seek to align ourselves more fully with you, as we seek to reconcile once more in our relationship with you, guide us with a firm confidence in our faith that we may be with others as truer offerings of Christ. Help us to see, God, with your eyes, a vision of how you look upon others as your beloved. Help us to see your sons and your daughters as our brothers and sisters so that we may know that you do not desire for us to be set apart from one another, to be set against one another, but that you seek for us to be reconciled and once more sharing in loving relationship as you intend for us. God, help us to be renewed in our efforts just as you renew us in our lives so that we may come to pursue your kingdom above all things And that with everything that we have to offer in this world, people may see a glimpse of the Christ. God, there are so many things in this world that plague our minds, that distract us from you. And so in this silence, God, we lift up to you our loved ones, our family members with whom we live or across the country our neighbors, and the people that we know at work and school, all the community around us, God, throughout the land we travel, 
We pray, Lord, for your healing presence and new life. Holy God, from state to state and nation to nation across the world, we pray, God, for a sense of your peace poured out. We pray, Lord, for our leaders in the community and in offices, that they have a greater sense of goodness for one another. Put within each of them a spirit to live in community not pursuing power and wealth, but pursuing the well-being of all whom they lead. And show us, God, how we may do that more fully ourselves in all the ways that you have given us ability. We desire, God, to paint a picture of this world that looks more like your heavenly kingdom than the way we have shaped things so far. We seek to be brought closer to you in all of our relationships, in all of our ways, in all of the world. God, hear the prayers we have lifted up to you and help us even beyond this time of prayer to hear how you are speaking into our lives as we go. As we lift this up in Christ's name, we join our voices together now in the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. According to the Gospel of Luke, one day while he, he being Jesus, was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby. They had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. 
and the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Just then some men came, carrying a paralyzed man on a bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus, but finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven you. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, Who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questionings, he answered them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven you, or to say stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who is paralyzed, I say to you, stand up and take your bed and go to your home. Immediately he stood up before them, took what he had been lying on, and went to his home, glorifying God. I invite you now to close your eyes as we meditate on this scripture. Think on what God is saying to us across these generations about how Jesus is Lord over sin. Jesus is Lord over illness and injury. As you consider this gospel message, as you think on Jesus' power and authority to forgive, how have you yourself experienced it? When have you denied Christ's forgiveness? Forgiveness in your life or forgiveness offered for others? What limits do you try to claim against Christ's ability to forgive sins? In this passage and throughout the Gospels, we see evidence of Jesus performing miracles. What healing miracles have you yourself witnessed or felt? This man has friends who have enough faith to bring him to Christ. Have you carried someone else, physically or metaphorically, because of your life of faith? Have you carried someone when they were broken? Or have you been broken in some way and need other people in the faith to carry you? Hear God's word again through the Gospel of Luke. One day, while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby. They had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Just then, some men came, carrying a paralyzed man on a bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When he saw their faith, 
He said, friend, your sins are forgiven you. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questionings, he answered them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who is paralyzed, I say to you, stand up and take your bed and go to your home. Immediately, he stood up before them, took what he had been lying on, and went to his home, glorifying God. With their own eyes and ears, Jesus' contemporaries witnessed his miracles, and they heard his teachings. Scribes and Pharisees saw Jesus, they heard him, and still they doubted and denied what Jesus was capable of doing. What doubts do you have? What doubts do you harbor about Jesus, about his life and teachings, his death and resurrection? How do you question what others have witnessed to you about Jesus? We see so much of God's power and authority in Jesus' life. What of the presence and power of Jesus have you known? Jesus' supernatural power is to bring new life for all things, healing not just in the body, but in the mind, in the heart, in spirit, in relationships. I invite you to take a moment now to pray to Christ for new life as you have need of it. And now think about the people in your life. Pray for others who you know who also need new life in Christ. In this gospel story, the friends who were carrying the paralyzed man on a bed saw that new life was possible for him through Christ. They had a vision beyond what the world showed them. They had a vision of Christ. I invite you now to listen for this perspective that Christ gives us as we hear God's word in 2 Corinthians. From now on, therefore... We regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, 
Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God for our sake. He made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We've witnessed in the gospel that a paralyzed man was reconciled with God and we see Pharisees and scribes who need reconciliation. Through Christ, everything old, sin, brokenness, separation from God, all this will pass away. How can you be an ambassador for Christ and see others as God sees them? Not in the way of worldly doubt and denial, but in the way of believing that everything can become new What work of reconciliation is yours to carry, just as the men carried their friend in need? Let us pray. Holy God, you who have witnessed to us of all the wonders of the world, equip us to do wonders ourselves. Help us, Lord, to have the faith of the paralyzed man's friends so that we may carry the broken ones around us to you. And God, when we are the paralyzed ourselves, Help us to be open to our sisters and brothers in Christ around us, pouring out your care, restoring us once more to you ourselves. God, we pray that we may know the difference. Help us to see our own brokenness and our own need so that we may allow others to guide us, to care for us. And God, help us to not miss all the ways you have equipped us to bring others to Christ, the one in whose name we pray. Amen. 
My sisters and brothers, as you go out from this time of worship now, I pray that you are going out as a person of faith, seeing the world a little bit more clearly as God does, and pursuing Christ with the vision that you have, so that as you share life with others, it may be him that you offer. As you go out from this place now, uh, we know that you may be separated from other people, but you are always accompanied by God, ever present with you, as the Father who created you, as the Son who saves you, and as the Holy Spirit who will equip you every step of the way. Go in peace. Stop.